Hi guys, today we're going to be carrying on with the How to Get Faster at the Rubik's Cube series. This is episode 7 and it's going to be regarding F2L. Now, as an introduction, I'm going to be explaining to those of you who don't know the advanced method. This series is all about people trying to transition from starting out around a minute or two minutes and trying to get that sub minute, maybe sub 30 second solves. Okay, so I'm just going to show you on a scramble cube basic ideas of the advanced method. Okay, so there's our cross. Now the first part of the advanced method that's different from the beginner's method is the stage we'll be looking at today and that's the F2L. F2L stands for first two layers and instead of inserting the corners individually and then the edge pieces we're going to be in matching them up as one is here and inserting them together. This effectively cuts out one whole stage. So, like I said, there are two stages to this part. First is matching up, the second is inserting. On the whole, there are two, two main ways to insert. The first is when they are already connected at the top, like this, and you simply get it next to the slot that it should be in, open up the slot, put it in, and then close again. There is another technique called sledgehammer move, whereby you do an F, an R prime, an F prime, and an R. Now, the second way of inserting is when you have this kind of matching. So you have a corner here, and then the corresponding edge here with the opposite colour facing on top. This is good because by doing one move you can match them up normally. Now this may seem strange to people who aren't used to it, but what you want to do is get the is get the corner above the slot and then match them up. By doing this you've also opened the slot, turn the U face to put the put the pair inside the slot and then close again. So, okay, so that's basic inserting. Now I just want to say at this point that this isn't a full tutorial on F2L. This is merely trying to alert you to the existence of it and give you a brief idea about it. Because there are many good tutorials out there and a lot more in depth than this is going to be. This series is just about trying to show you new things that will help you get your solve time down. That being said, I'm going to show you a few cases and as I use intuitive F2L, um, I'm going to teach you how to teach yourself intuitive F2L, if that makes sense. Just to complete the advanced method and let you know what the next two episodes of this series are going to be about, um, once you have your first two layers, um, there are then only two more steps to do. The first is to get all of the top colour facing up, in this case yellow, And the secondly is to orientate all the colours correctly. To do this you will have to learn a lot of new algorithms and it's quite a lengthy process but you can do it using Tulook which I'll explain at the time. Okay, now back to the F2L. If you didn't understand what I was saying earlier I'll try and explain the matching part of F2L a bit clearer now with a few walkthrough examples. So here we have one of the corners. It's the red and green one and it's currently above its slot. We need to find its edge. Here it is. As it's in a slot, the first thing we need to do is get it out of, out of its slot. We'll do this in any old way at the minute for example purposes. So we can lift it out, turn it the top, move it out of the way and put the cross back in place. Right, now they're both on top. What we want to do is get them in a matching position. Now as the colours facing up aren't the same, we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get them in position where the corner is here and the edge is here so that we can match them up like so. So to do that, we're going to move this out of the way of the top layer, turn the top to get it in the right slot and put the top back. Now we have a matching like this again. We would turn the U face to get the corner above its slot 
and then use the move we learned earlier to insert it. In doing so, we've matched up the red and blue, so we will turn that over its slot and insert it in the same way. Once you've done it a lot, you'll learn to in insert with both hands from behind and from in front. There will be some algorithms which are more helpful than using intuitive. This one is a good example. Where the edge is already in place and the corner is above it, but the, color, but the colors are swapped. What you want to do here is the R, U, R prime, U prime move three times. And that will insert it as such. Now here's a more tricky example for the last one. And we've got the added problem of not messing up any of the slots we've already filled. So the first thing we want to do with these two is separate them on the top layer so that we can manipulate them to get them into a matching position. And the second thing we want to do is only use our empty slot to do that. Right. Let's turn the U face so that when we, when we move the corner out the way, we won't be messing up any other slot. We'll do this here. Make sure the slot is there. Turn this down so we're only opening up the empty slot. Turn this away and put this up again. We've not damaged any of our current slots and they're now separated. When you have the white face up of the corner, the trick here is to get the edge above its color. So here we've got blue and orange. Have it in line with its blue. Turn it away from the empty slot. Move the corner over it and put the empty slot back in place. This will have matched it and then we can insert it as before. I'll do one more and then talk through some of the advantages of this. So let's look for any pair on top. Uh, there's, none at, there's none at the minute. So what we'll do is use this one, the red and blue, because as you can see here, the red and blue matches up with the red and blue edge here. So when we are taking the red and blue out of its wrong slot, we can match it up like so, move it out of the way and put the slot back down. Then we can insert that pair like that. In doing so, we've matched up another pair, so we'll insert that in the back slot here. See that there. Now we have two more. We've got two here which we want to separate and in separating it you'll learn to separate in a way which will match it up as well. Now we can insert this pair which leaves one remaining pair, the red and green, which has also been matched up there as you can see. What I advise you to do now is to go away and look up different F2L methods. Intuitive worked for me, but it might not for you. You may be good at learning algorithms and just want to learn each case as there is. There are many cases, but the, the idea for this is just practice. The more you do it, the more you'll get used to different cases, spotting them early and being able to match them up easier. I'm still learning now and I've been doing F2L for over a year now. It's the biggest part of the solve and it's, for a lot of people, where you can gain the most time, especially using the method of look ahead where you get so used to F2L that you'll find your next pair and how to insert it while you're doing the previous pair. That way it's sort of a non-stop solve where you're always turning the cube and there's no breaks. Okay, so I hope this has helped. I hope this has shown you something that you don't know and if you do know about it then I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Please give this a like. I enjoy doing these videos the most and uh, we'll be making the next one straight away. Alright then, please like, subscribe and happy cubing! Hi guys, today's tip is going to be on finger tricks and triggers. Now, for those of you who don't use finger tricks, I...